All right, Troy here with ATD Racing. Welcome back and thanks for coming. All right, so back in the garage today and what we're doing is a update on where the Cobra is, what I've been working on with the uh, wiring and pretty much what, we, what I've been doing is all of the power ground wires that are required for the battery uh, cutoff switch and for the installation of my race wire solutions uh, relay and um, a fuse module. So I wanted to, before I can start wiring in all of the um, the lights and stuff for that, I wanted to make sure that the power ground and all that stuff is done. So we're going to talk about that today as well as a little bit on some of the wire practices that I like to use or I've come to learn uh, when doing larger gauge power ground wires uh, and building those harnesses. So in the trunk, I got my excess power D1400 uh, AGM battery. So it's a 14 volt battery. And I have my race wire solutions relay and ground, uh, relay and fuse panel. Uh, as pre previously discussed, I have its power ground wires, of course. And then over here, I have my battery to the data panel 300 amp solid state battery cutoff switch. And then I have a, a fuse under there. And again, we'll go over all the wiring diagrams. Uh, I will cover the uh, a diagram of how I wired everything and its routing, but just kind of showing you that's the fuse that's going to the firewall, data panel, solid state relay. And then up here is the panel that I made. So what you're looking at here is your FC3, uh, your four FC3 fuel pump controller. I have its wires. And then I have a switchable Busman 200 amp circuit breaker. So off, on, off. So that's kind of like my ma uh, another disconnect uh, to fuse all of the wires here. And that's resettable. Uh, I kind of like that. So we'll discuss that a little bit. But that's my setup here. And then going on to the front of the, we're actually looking at the inside of the car. So I have the front side of the power core three and this whole panel, I'm hoping my rear seat delete covers that. So it's kind of uh, sealing off the trunk and it's not so much of an eyesore. And then I have my wires that are going on to the front inside the car, as you can see here. And a little bit of light there. That's the slot that I cut. We've previously discussed that. I just have to secure those wires and the hoses. And then they go inside through this area right there, all the way over, and then out through there. So that hole was there uh, where the wires are coming out of that little kick panel, but I enlarged the holes. And all the holes that I add, I add that little bit of protecting um, part on the on the hole so it doesn't chafe through the wires. And then I have my bulkhead fittings as previously discussed and everything gets a boot. All the power wires can boot. Okay, in the front of the car, that's the back side for, or the front side of the firewall bulkhead fittings. And again, we'll discuss the wiring and where, what's gonna get connected to those bulkhead fittings, what's not gonna get connected to those bulkhead fittings. Starting off, what I switched to was from a kicker style battery terminal kit. And what this used, you would just strip wire and shove wire in there. A lot of people do that, I see it all the time, I hate it. Uh, I, I used a ferrule solution, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, this is for a battery size cable of one aught right there, a, a, a ferrule. And what it does is it allows you to sh not just shove a uh, unterminated piece of wire into a battery connector. So like as you take it in and take it or put it in and take it back out, the wires get frayed uh, and you're then potentially losing some of the connection uh, using that. So you shove the wires into a, term a ferrule and it crimps, and then now you get a solid connection. This is what I was using. I thought it was pretty good considering what I had at the time. Um, 
and, and I, I really like these Ferro kits. I know a lot of people are visual learners, so what you're looking at here is a, fer a cheap ferro kit that I got off Amazon. These are for smaller gauge wires. Again, this is for a one out gauge. You don't have to use a crimper for the larger one out gauge. You just put your wire in there, and then when you smash it down with the battery terminal lug or nut, uh, for example, like that, it will then crimp that battery terminal like that, and then you get a solid connection. So for the visual learners here, what you're trying to eliminate is shoving uh, just open wire in there and using the lug to, to tighten it down. Obviously this hole is way larger than that small gauge wire, but this is for demonstration. So what you do is you, this, this is a cheap kit I got off of Amazon with a pair of crimpers, probably way better setups that you can buy, but this has worked well for me. So for like your wires on your FC3-4 controller, you would have unterminated wires or loose wires, and then you could then put your ferrule on there. I had already cut it to length so that the wire just is at the very edge of this. And then what you do is you put your crimpers, put it all away, and you see if I can get this one-handed. There we go. And then you simply crimp down. And now you have a nice, good, solid wire. You can take it in and out, smash it down, and uh, you never lose any bit of the wires. It, it doesn't get all frayed up. So I like these. This is what I was using. Uh, this is a cheap little kit, like I said, ferrule crimping tool. Got it on Amazon uh, years ago. And then you have to buy these separate for the larger gauges. Anyway. That's what I was using uh, before. And what I switched to was for, I, I prefer when I do my battery terminals, I like actual ends uh, that I can secure with a bolt. You can crimp it down good. I'll cover some practices on doing that. But I found this company, SDHQ. They're from, uh, they reside in Arizona. And I bought their billet battery terminal kit uh, from, from this company. And we'll look at that here for a second. So their battery terminal kit, two lugs, pretty expensive. It's like $85 just for their lug kit. Another $35 for just these protective, get the light out the way, just for these protective uh, panels here. But I really, really like the kit. So what it allowed me to do is go from those ferrules to all lugs. I get to make good lugs. I started to just bolt down all these lugs to the excess power using a, a single bolt, but I really just, I didn't like how it looked and I didn't think that provided the best connection. So I picked up their kit. They come, it comes as a set and it has multiple connection points here. So um, you have your, your lug and this just this screw right or bolt right here just tightens it down on the lug. Uh, mark ground or neutral, and the other is mark power or positive. And then this bolt just goes simply straight through. That way you can use both sides for lugs. And you see I have two on this one. And then on the back, it has two bolts, so you can put smaller lugs, which I am currently using. You can see these two smaller lugs uh, down. And I just think it was probably one of the nicest setups that I've seen on uh, online that, that I found. So shout out again to SDHQ. I'll put a link in the description. I really like their setup. Uh, oh, you know, also uh, they have another option where this is a threaded hole and you can put another lug on the top of that. So this part, the only thing I kind of don't like about it is that this piece is now exposed but they wanted to give you another provision where you can add another lug. You just put a bolt through there and you can now add another lug for a super secure connection. And uh, it's, just, it's just a solid kit. So I just want to give a shout out to them. I'll put a link in the description. So moving on here, uh, the 4FC3 comes with four, four gauge battery wire, which is great. A uh, nice thick gauge uh, wire for their FC3 fuel pump controller, but it's X, 
this uh, SGX cable, and this is standard for battery terminals when you're making battery terminals in the automotive industry. Uh, what I don't like about it is it's very rigid. If you had a requirement for the cable to be rigid, you see how it's just kind of keeping its shape. It's not too pliable. Um, it, it's cool, but what I prefer is welding cable. Plenty of people know about it. It's nothing new, but it's way more pliable. It'll mold to your shape. And essentially, it carries, has the potential to carry more voltage, but doesn't matter in the automotive industry. I think SGX it limits somewhere around like 60 volts, roughly, and welding uh, wire could could carry a lot more voltage. It only really matters if you're doing like solar panel wiring. But for the car anyway, it's good, but this stuff is just more pliable. I'm a fan of Temco. You can see it there, Temco.com. I buy all my stuff through them. I've seen other manufacturers. Just make sure you read the reviews. Some of the stuff, the gauge wire isn't true. So four gauge welding wire may not be the same for all manufacturers. I've found Temco to be one of the best out there. True. I believe they're... Uh, all made in the USA. I support that. I also get double wall shrink tube. I uh, order it through Temco as well. You can also buy a bag of your copper lugs from them as well. So I get all that stuff from them. I have multiple sizes. This is four gauge to just to compare welding wire to four gauge SGX. I've replaced the, the four SGX battery cable with all my own uh, welding wire and I make my own lines. Uh, for battery wire or battery cable, I like to use um, just the regular braid, uh, expandable braid protect wire protector. And then for all the other harnesses, I use uh, good split loom stuff. I get a lot of my stuff from Pro Wire, uh, Race Wire Solutions, but I like the split loom because it's serviceable. You can get back in it. This stuff, once you loom it on, it's uh, you'd have to take it back off completely the harness or cable it's fine for battery cable because i'm not going to add anything to it uh, i just want to put it on there I, don't, I only use this stuff the expandable uh shrink tube like this see it expands and slide it over i only use this for battery cable because i'm not going to add anything to it uh, and i only do it for the positive wires the welding cable usually it has a really thick jacket so you're generally pretty good with that. You don't have to run a protective coating, but I just like to add an extra layer of protection uh, for the power wire. So I do that. So these are pretty much what my harnesses end up looking like. This is a short run that I was going to use for the rear. Uh, I, I messed it up when I changed to the SDHQ battery terminals. This no longer works. So it's just a piece. But anyway, double wall adhesive line shrink wrap or shrink tube. And then I use my expandable uh, wire protectant. And a little pro tip on this is what I want to show. So, so here's my little pro tip on when you're building your one out or your large gauge wires. So the first lug you can just put anywhere on there and crimp it. First of all, I like to use crimpers, hydraulic crimpers. Plenty of people have seen it, they've posted it online, but these are way better than those hammer down setups. They're just a set of hydraulic crimpers. I like them a lot. They come with uh, different size dies, so you get a good solid crimp every time. Um, this particular kit came with the extra set of seals. I got it on Amazon like years ago. I've seen them at different prices for these hydraulic crimping tools. This one is the Mick-70. Um, it's, it's all I've ever used. I actually shove this piece in a, uh, I put the jaws in a vise if I can take the cable off and then I just uh, create my cables in a vise. If not, I've also done it on the car, no big deal. Uh, it works out pretty good. But this is what I use to do to crimp all the connections on my large battery cables just to show you. So the pro tip here is your first wire, when you when you have your stud, the, the wire can go anywhere. So what you don't wanna do is create unnecessary strain by making a cable off the, the car and just crimping your wires everywhere. So for example, you can see this one is turned. Uh, so what people will do is they'll just make the cable, 
crimp their ends anywhere and then they'll go to install one side and you can turn the wire. Now one knot is pretty flexible. Welding wire itself is super flexible so it can move, but if you don't identify exactly the orientation that the second lug needs to be, you're now then having to twist the wire around and put an extra strain and potentially increasing your chances of having a failure, no matter the crimp, no matter the dual wall adhesive line, you're just uh, creating a potential for failure down the line. So what I recommend doing, you crimp your one side anywhere, and then the second side, let's say my bolt was here, and obviously you want your bolt on the flat side, but let's say that's how you crimped it, that would be the problem because you really want it like this. And to do that, you now have to twist the cable and put strain. Uh, welding wire, like I said, it'll go back. It can move, but still no need to do that. So what I like to do is a little test piece. I take my box knife and I always cut the wire or cut the jacket of the wire as far back to, so that the wire hits the end. So that's, I use that for my little measurement. So the wire comes to the end of this piece and it'll shove all in there. Then I take my box knife and then I cut it all the way around. This one I pre-cut. So I do that. I don't necessarily twist these wires. I just leave them like that. And I make sure the wire is small enough to fit into my lug. So generally you want, eh, maybe a little bit too long. Generally you want the lug up against the jacket. Uh, that's a little too long. So what I would do is I'd take that off and I'd use a pair of uh, aviation snips and I'd just snip a little bit of the wire off so that the jacket is right up against the lug, kind of like that right there. So e either way, actually that may work because now I'm shoving the end of that wire in there. So anyway, uh, what I would do is I would then orient my wire or the lug on the end to line up so I turn that uh, lug on the wire and then once I got it to where I wanted it I take a paint marker I had this one kind of pre-marked already but what I would do is I'd mark my lug I'd mark my jacket and that's my lineup mark so now if I could take the wire off the car I would and then I'd go to my, my hydraulic crimp and I would then cr uh, make sure it's lined up, shove my wire on, make sure it's lined up, and then I crimp it there. And now I know I have my lug oriented in the right mount. For years, I try, or a couple times I've tried to, I'll just kind of eyeball it, but just mark it. Uh, whether it's paint marker, I like paint marker because it doesn't wipe off. Like if you did a permanent marker, it could just wipe off, especially if you got sweaty paws. So anyway, I mark it. And then I take it off the car, on the car, crimp it, boom, it stays there. That's the right orientation. So now I'm not trying to bend my wire around to get the lug to line up just right. That's my little uh, pro tip there. All right, so another little thing that I've done here is uh, this connector is for the gas tank. It is for your fuel level sender. So after going through all the wires, I'm using SC3, uh, the four return fuel system, fuel pump controller. Uh, you only left with two wires that you actually need, especially if you eliminate all the emission stuff. Um, well, the OEM fuel pumps, you just don't need all the other wires. So you're left with two wires, a signal wire and the ground, and this big seven pin connector is kind of heavy. I always thought that, that it's not that it's heavy in weight of the car, it's just heavy in relation to these two wires holding the weight of this huge connector. So clean it up you know i'm a big fan of deutsch connectors i did go ahead and uh just repin that with a smaller two pin deutsch connector i still have to finish this harness um as far as like wrap the wires up good put some uh better protector over it and then clean up my gas tank and i did the same thing on the back side as well so uh, or underneath the car 